Hi everyone, this is Elizabeth from Strange Ago. In this video, we are going to explore the history of carousel rides. Carousels, also called merry-go-rounds, used to be found in nearly all the big cities and in numerous parks. Some carousels were large, while others were small and transportable, one-man operations that could be set up at one location and, after collecting all the pennies for rides, would be moved to another setting. Children from the past loved carousel rides just as much as they do today. At one time, horses and mules pulled the merry-go-round in circles for the entertainment of children and adults. That started to change in 1904 when inventors started coming up with new ways to run a merry-go-round. One inventor and several manufacturers put a patent on an auto merry-go-round. The models of this new invention were made of steel and some wood slats. The engine was made with ball and roller bearings, arranged so that when the swing was loaded on one side, it would run as easy as though the weight was evenly distributed. To make the merry-go-round go round, a person had to stand at a lever and push it back and forth. The merry-go-round would gain speed and could be kept in motion with little effort. Two types of these lever machines were patented. The first was for a backyard merry-go-round that could seat up to four adults adults or eight children. The other was for people who ran merry-go-round businesses and had 16 seats. The organ music is a major part of the carousel experience and many different songs have been played over the years. For the carousel that was once at the Pinewood Amusement Park in Kansas they played, back in 1905, in the shade of the old apple tree, marching to the music of the band March Lorraine, Pretty Lips, Goodbye My Lady Lover, and Yankee Doodle Boy. In 1917, a newspaper printed a photo and announced that artillerymen were being taught to ride on carousel horses. The brief little article stated that, the men learn how to mount and dismount while the horse goes up and down and around. It has proved an excellent means of breaking the recruits into the rudiments of horseback riding. Owners of the small transportable carousels made their money setting up their carousels and charging for rides. It just so happened that two carousel owners became bitter rivals in New York City in 1919. They each accused the other of stealing customers and working the other's spots. One day, the two men broke out into a fight. One man got punched and the other got stabbed. The man that was stabbed fell to the ground. People ran to find a policeman, while the guy that did the stabbing made a run for it. In the struggle between the policeman and the stabber, the police officer let out two shots. The policeman shot a 14-year-old boy through the head and hit an 11-year-old girl. The officer was suspended from duty and later charged with felonious assault. Accidents were common on the carousel rides. There were no safety measures and parents seemed to think that you could plop a small child on a carousel and he'd stay put. The following 1922 newspaper article tells what happened to one father when he tried to give his three-year-old a carousel ride. At Coney Island today, I saw a young man place a three-year-old on a horse and tie a strap around his body so that he would not fall. But when the carousel was started, the child fell and hung head first while the carousel whirled around. The child's father, who had been sitting on a bench nearby, made a flying leap at the carousel, but missed his footing and was dragged about 20 yards, holding fast to an iron rod. He was able by using all his strength to pull himself up and got on the carousel barely in time to save his child from falling to the ground and probably being killed. Horse figures were not the only figures on the old carousels. In this article from 1904, a storm washed away some of the figures from one businessman's carousel. The article read, Herman Kenselman, whose merry-go-round was washed out to sea in the storm of Saturday, has engaged seven men to recover some of the wooden figures of fishes, dragons, and other animals, which broke away from the wrecked carousel. He has found no traces of two of the most valuable figures, which were life-size mermaids, carved by hand at a cost of $300 each. He hopes to recover some of the larger wooden serpents and mermaids for the reason that iron plates were attached to them, which would act as keels and prevent them from splitting. Thank you for watching my latest video. Please don't forget to give this video a like and while you're at it, subscribe to Stranger Go to keep up with the latest videos covering our strange history.